six. So we're going to get started with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for you being God and God all by yourself. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we understand that we could do nothing without you. So Lord, we pray now that you strengthen us. Open up our hearts and minds that we we'll hear a word from you. Bless those that has been affected by COVID and by all things that's going on around. But Lord, we know that you're in control. And Lord, we pray that you just have your divine way. Lord, we pray that as we dive into your word, that you open up our ears and hearts, that we will be hearers and doers of your word. That people will not see us, but they'll see you living in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. We're going to get started. We thank God for another Wednesday night, another refreshing and renewing. It's, again, we're going to be in Ecclesiastics talking about practical advice for living. Practical advice for living. We've been talking about Solomon in Ecclesiastics. He's been giving some advice, and I think Solomon says some things that we feel a lot of the times. Uh, so many times we, we don't say how we feel, but sometimes it's just about having a little talk with Jesus and, and getting some things out and letting God know how we feel, and he reacts. And It's all about a relationship that we have with him. So... I think on last week we talked about what you know is not enough. And we talked about a good time won't bring joy. Uh, Solomon suggested that you can go have all the fun and do all the things you want, but if you don't have Jesus, you still won't have joy. Uh, Solomon says you can search for all the wisdom in the world and, and know it all, but if you know everything, don't know Jesus. You'll die just like the fool that didn't know anything. Solomon gives us some practical advice for living. He gives us some stuff that if we'll take heed as to what Solomon said, because Solomon has searched and went through all of this. Solomon said that he was he was trying to find these answers, and he he went through it and he found that these things that everything that we do and have, if we don't have God. It's all vanity. It's worthless. So our biggest and most precious thing in life is to have God in our lives, to have a relationship with him, to walk and talk with him, to be able to, to know that he will be where he wants, where we need him to be. I often say, whenever you call on him, he answered and said he's present because he's a present help in a time of need. Whatever we need, God will be it for us. Tonight, as we look at chapter three of Ecclesiastes, Solomon gives us some more advice. Uh, I was going to look over this one, chapter three, and, and go to another chapter, but when I looked at it, because most of the time we hear chapter three, we hear verses one through one through ten quite a bit. We, for the most of us, we've heard verses one through ten, or one through eight, in it, one through nine, one through eight anyway. But just for you hearing, I want to read Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through ten. He says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to render and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, 
a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Solomon speaks and lets us know that in this life, there's a time for everything. And, and, and mostly it's a time for everything because in this world, it's ever changing. Nothing stays the same. When you go to sleep and you wake up, there's a change in life. And many times we expect things to stay the same, especially if it suits us and makes us happy. We don't want change. Uh, life is about change, though. And life is about how we deal with change. Matthew Henry says, to expect unchanging happiness in a changing world must end in disappointment. So if you're expecting change, un, unchanging happiness, if you expect your happiness to stay the same in an ever-changing world, you really expect disappointment. God never says things was going to stay the same, but he says he never changes. And as long as he never changes, then we don't have to worry about it. We just have to put our trust in him. And if we put our trust in him, then we don't have to worry about what goes on around him, around us. Even though the changes come, we know how to handle them because whatever change takes place, God already knows what's going to happen. And if we'll follow his lead and, and speak and let him lead us and guide us, then change won't affect us in ways that are, make us disappointed. Because life can be disappointing. For most of us, some things that ha has happened in the last few year, few months that disappointed us. But thank God that if your happiness doesn't rest in the changing of the things of life and it rests in and it rests in Jesus Christ, you'll always have happiness. Because when He gives you happiness and when He gives you peace, then everything will be all right. When, when we think about how this world is constantly changing, we can only expect disappointment. God's whole plan for this world, for the government of this world, will be found altogether wide, just, and good. You know, we, we live in a world where everything is about what we're going to do and how we're going to handle situations, what we need to change and how we need to fix this. And, and, and we, we seem like our biggest fight we have to fight here for the change in, in the way the government is ran, how unfair we are treated as people. But, but we have to know that God sits high and he looks low. He never sleeps nor slumbers. So whatever goes on, God sees it, and, and he knows what's going on. God has never intended to leave us by ourselves. So no matter what we're going through in life, we can depend on God to be right by our side. Oh. And because he knows it, there will come a time of judgment. But we have to make sure that we don't try to judge it and we allow God to do it. Not saying that we don't have something to do. Not saying that we don't have to work to do what God wants us to do. And not saying that we don't have to put forth effort. But we have to trust him and be in tune with him. So we'll go where he wants us to go and do the things that he wants us to do. To do. And if we in God's will, it might not work out the way we want it to. But it'll work always work out the way God wants it to. That's why Paul says in Romans 8 and 28 that all things work together for the good of them that love him and who are called according to his purpose. 
So, so yeah, it might not look like the way we want it to, but just know that it's going to be the way God wants it to be. So, so the advice to us that Solomon gives us in there and is that there's a time that there's a time for everything. And if we understand God's timing is not our time. I think I said it last week and I say it all the time. The, the old saints would say it like this. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. There's a season in our life that we have to go through. But there's another season when we up on the mountaintop. But there's always a season that we have to be in the valley. Because if it's not for the valley, we wouldn't be able to handle what's up on the mountaintop. So, so we have to realize that God's in control. So the advice to us is don't get in the way of God doing his job. Solomon says that because God knows what he's doing. And because God is the author and the finisher of all things, he created this world, he made us, he made everything in it, then our job is to stay out of God's way, but to aid in the way that he tells us to help him. Our, what, what's our work? What's the advice to us? We must seize the favorable opportunity for every good purpose and work. So, so when God opens doors, we have to be ready and willing to step in and seize the opportunities. Solomon says, because there's a time for everything, God will give us, give us the time if we will be humble and listen to him. He'll make time for us to step in and, and seize the favorable opportune times to do certain things. So many times we jump ahead of God and try to do it ourselves till we mess it up and it causes us more hell and heartache because we're trying to do it the way we want to do it and not the way God wants us to do it. And, and sometimes we try to do it in our time and when God hasn't opened the door for us to do it. So Solomon said, there's a time and a season for all things. And God is the creator of this time and season. So, so Solomon's advice is just not to not to get in God's way, but to listen to the voice of God and follow when He puts us in place. The good work is spreading the word of God. The purpose is to win souls to Christ and to build His kingdom. We can't do that without God on our side and without knowing when and where to move. And God tells us when and where to move. O100 says, even though I move so slow, I move at God's command. And if we move at God's command, it's some things that we'll miss hindering us because when God leads us, Sometimes he's already prepared the way for us. And if we go where he's prepared, to, I'm not saying there's some things that won't come up against us, but he's already hiding them out. Pray not because the evil doers. But when you and, and when you're following his path, you don't have to worry about it. Because he he's walking in front of you, he's walking beside you, and he's walking behind you. And he covers you. So you don't have to worry about it. And sometimes life will be a little easier if we just realize that all that goes on, everything that we go through is really vanity. But the one thing that really matters is having God on our side. And if God is on your side and if you're in relationship with God, Everything else around you is truly vanity. It really don't matter because you got God. Now, don't 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 say Reverend Galloway said that you don't need nobody else or nothing else. God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. So whatever you need, God will supply. You don't have to worry about it. So first of all, Solomon says to us that there's a time and a place, and you should expect unchanging happiness in a world that is constantly changing. 
So when change comes, you ought to be able to handle it. You ought to be prepared for change because God will prepare you if you just spend time with him. Next, next thing Solomon tells us, not only do we have to know that there's a time and a season, but we also have to understand it in verse 11 through 15, Solomon says that God made it just the way he wanted to make it. Verses 11 through 15, Solomon says he had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor any take anything taken from it. And God doeth, doeth it that man should fear before him. That which had been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God required that which is past. Solomon says, look, if God made it, it's all right. I don't know about you, but if God did it, ain't nothing else can be done. God made it in his time the way he wanted to make it because if he did it, nothing can be added, nothing can be taken. It's just right. Even when we don't see the big picture, we must know that it is all right. Even when God has told us that things are going to go this way and we can't see the outcome, we have to really realize that it's all right because God has the final say so. God has made everything beautiful in his time. He also has set the world in the heart so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning in other words, what we see is not always how it is. God says, we, our understanding is not his understanding. We can search and never find the depths of God because his understanding and his, and his ways, his thoughts are way beyond our thoughts. His understanding is way beyond our understanding. There's nothing we can study. There's nothing we can do. We can't get it all and understand what God has for us all the time. Solomon said, you want to know what really makes life hard for us sometimes? Solomon says, for our walk with God and our walk in this ever-changing world, what really makes it hard is that sometimes by thinking that we are born for ourselves, that it's all about us, it's all about what we want, when we want it, how we want it. We make life hard. Our only business is to do good in this life, which is short and uncertain. What you mean, Reverend, by doing good? Glad you asked. By doing good, it means to make sure you're in the will of God. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not perfect. We're striving to be more and more Christ-like. But our job is to treat each other right. Our job is to love one another. Our job is to make sure that we're in relationship with God. Because everything else, it really don't matter. Because one thing about it, Solomon said, this life is short and uncertain. Tomorrow is not promised. One thing about everyone in this life, we all have one thing in common. And it's all one thing is we all are going to face death. Smart, rich, 
broke, no education, highly educated, we all got to face death. And someone will tell them that this life is short and uncertain, but our job is to make sure that we're working in God's will. It's not about what we want. It's not about how we want it. It's all about God. He supplied our needs. He gives us health and strength. He guides us. He leads us. He wants us. He gives us life and life more abundant. He says he has a plan for our life. And he knows the plan he has for us. But our job is to know that it's not about us. It's all about him. And, and if we realize that it's all about him, life will be a whole lot easier because some of the things that we go through, we just be like, well, Lord, it's yours. Since you gave me this life, I'm going to let you lead me. And if you lead me and you said you were going to protect me and keep me, then I'm going to allow you to do just what you do and then protect me and keep me as long as I'm walking in your will, as long as I'm doing what you have. And even by your grace and mercy, when I don't do it, you still got Solomon says, so we have to know that it ain't about us, it's all about him. Because if it were really about us, we wouldn't be here. Because if we really got what we deserve, we wouldn't be here. Solomon says, everything that God has made, he made it good and in his own time. It's just right. We we have nothing, nothing. We can't do nothing. It's nothing we can do. It's nothing we can say to make it better unless we have God. So, so what makes life a little more bearable for us? Matthew Henry says it this way in his commentary. Matthew Henry says, satisfaction with divine providence is having faith that all things work together for good to them that love him. God do it all that men should fear before him the world as it has been, is, and will be. There has no change befallen us, nor has any temptation by it taken us, but such as is coming to men. Solomon says to us that Whatever God made, we can't add to it, we can't take from it. Matter of fact, even in our lives, the only thing that we can do is get in God's way. We, we, can't, we can't add days to our lives, we can't even take days away from our lives. God, God made it, God created us, God says if, if you're Trust in him. He says in the word, in all, lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So if we, if we do that, no matter what goes on in life, we won't have to worry about it. Because if we're following what God, if we're going where God wants us, yeah, that's going to be some rough time. That's going to be some hills to climb. There's going to be some valleys to go through. But through it all, God will be there going through the valley with us. He'll be going climbing the hills with us, but he'll make a way for us. That way it give us joy, unspeakable. It'll give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And we just trust him to do what he said in his word. And some things... Folks will be wondering, how you make it through that? How you still smiling? How, how can you have so much joy? And, and I love what it say. This joy that I had, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Because the joy I had, it comes from a power that looks, sits high and looks low. It comes from Jesus, the one that died for me. The one that raised, that was raised on Sunday morning for me. So I don't have to worry about it. The advice I have for you tonight is to first of all, know that there's a time and there's a place for everything. And that whatever God made, he made it good in his own time and it's all right. Even if we can't see the outcome, it's going to be all right. It got to be. 
Because God said it would be. And, and if God said it, we have to just stand on his promise that everything is going to be all right. As we walk through life, just know that it'll be all right. We don't have to worry because he's going to make ways when it looks like we can't make it. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. The old fools will say, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. They say a witch like me. And, and the advice for you to live tonight is just to keep trusting God. Put your trust in him. All things other than God is just sinking sand. Solomon said it's, it's vanity. It don't last. It won't get you nowhere. Old preacher would say it like this. You can have everything, but when you die, stuff, you can have all the stuff you want, but one thing about stuff is you'll leave stuff or stuff will leave you. But the one thing that will never leave, and that's your relationship with Jesus the Christ. If you got that relationship, you don't have to worry about it. You can call on it day and night, middle of the day, whenever you need it, you can call on it. My advice to you tonight, keep walking with God. Come hell or high water, walk with God. It'll be all right. Regardless of what goes on around you in society, keep walking with God. Through the ups and downs, keep walking with God. It'll be all right. Thank God for you watching tonight. Thank God for all of you that watch. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer.